you in your faith in the gospel. When Moses wanted to send the people into the promised land, he sent 12 spies to walk around the promised land. Now, no, are you listening? That's what you're doing here. Think about how many Christian tourists come to walk around this land. Now, listen. Out of that 12, there were two of them who had the right revelation, had the right faith. Ten of them did it. Which kind are you? Ten out of twelve, approximately, Christian tourists that come to this country and walk around, and they're just tourists. And they're like the other ten spies that just go to the Too many giants in there. Who's this giant who doesn't have a lot of fun? Are you listening to me? And that's the large majority of theology in the body of Christ today. But we want the other We want the other people. We want the ones that care and get Come on! What do you think God brought us here for? He didn't bring us here to run away. He didn't bring us here to evacuate. He didn't bring us here to surrender. He brought us here to influence the play. He takes possession. He takes inheritance. And what God meant for the people of Israel, the people of Israel is a pattern nation. And what God said to the nation of Israel gets transferred to every single nation of the world through faith in Jesus. Is that what you think God wants? God's just going to take this little tiny piece of the Holy Land. You know, you can ride a bicycle across some parts of this country. You can go for about two hours. And then God's going to take this little piece of the Holy Land and all the rest of the planet is going to get to the desert. Who can you do that? Do you think God is going to get to the This is the Holy Land now, but when Jesus comes, it's all going to be holy. God doesn't take possession of other people's land. This is the plan. What was Abraham's faith? Romans chapter 4, but to become the inheritor of the world. You have to take the faith of Israel. That is the honor of the nations of the world. Your nation is going to be redeemed. Your forests and your and your seeds and your people are going to be raised. And God has not a plan just for Israel. He has a plan for every nation of the world. You just have to get on the Joshua and take a side of it. So let's read this, this, this one verse and we'll blow the trumpet. We're in Joshua chapter 7, verse 20. Chapter 6, verse 20. Rev. Joshua, chapter 6, verse 20. So this is taking a piece of the text here. Two minutes. It says, So the people shouted when they blew the trumpet. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. The people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. And the people went up in the city, and every man took great, with great before him, and they took the city. The meaning of the sounding of this trumpet today in Jerusalem, which you hear from all of the nations, is to release the revelation. And to hear the voice of God from that second trumpet saying, Get ready. Yeshua is coming back soon. The dead will be raised. He will come back. He will establish his kingdom upon the earth. And we are getting time for him to conquer and take 
dominion and all of the kingdoms of this world will submit and become His kingdom. And we have got to be willing to fight to make that happen. Now, if you've got a trumpet, run up, come up here and run up here quickly to me. If you've got a trumpet or a silk bar or anything, okay, I can do what you already have to come up here. Now, yeah. don't look at them. I've got two more minutes for you. Just give me two more minutes for you to get ready I don't know if there's going to be a worship session right after that. If there is, then the worship team can come up. Come up here a little bit closer. Don't make two lines. Come up, come up, come up. Come up, come up. Come up. I don't know if you want to need your attention back for two minutes here. There's two other things that some people go to. One is, do you know why Yeshua, well, Jesus has the name Jesus? Because his name isn't Jesus, it's Yeshua. Why is his name Yeshua? Because Yeshua means God will save you of your sins. And he came the first time to save us of our sins. Right? But the name Yeshua is also a form of the name of Joshua. There is a second reason that Yeshua has the name of Joshua. It's because he came the first time to forgive us of our sins. And he's coming back the second time to conquer this land like Joshua did. I want you to get right now the second half of the revelation of the meaning of the name of Jesus. The first half is forgiveness of sin. And the second half is conquering planet Earth in the spirit of Joshua. As the fifth God would say, if I took anybody in the whole Bible, so I want to say, Jesus is like that person, hmm, Moses and Kulai, David, maybe, and then that's my man. I want to tell you, we're getting further away every day from the part of Jesus, the forgiveness of sin has. And we're getting closer every day to Him coming back to conquer and take the land. Amen. Amen. Now, as I said, here's the last point. There's two kinds of believers in the world today. This is there were two kinds of Israelites. There are two kinds of Christians today. Ten out of twelve, the great majority, I'm saying we can't fight this battle. We can't take the land back. Let's just give up and surrender. And there's two other questions. Come on. We can do it. God is on our side. It doesn't matter if there are giants against us. God can keep them out. And it's time to release into the church a spirit of Joshua and Caleb, a spirit that's getting ready for the second coming, ready for the resurrection of the dead, ready for Jesus' feet to put on the ground, ready to fight the battles of the second coming, and ready to take over this planet and take over the kingdoms of this world. And here's what I want us to do. Everybody stand up. If you, in a moment, when I say so, those of you who've got a still box and those of you who've if we can do it, then we're just going to put the next one to come up here with it. It's not good, and the rest of it will come up here. So, what we're going to do, in just a moment, we're going to blow this so far, we're going to shout. But more than that, we want to believe. Now, concentrate this 30 more seconds with me. I want you to believe as we do this that there's going to be release of the voice of God. Release of a mystery of God, release of the prophetic revelation, of the trumpet of God. So the church is going to be prepared to stand with Israel in the events of the end time, leading up to the second coming of Jesus. And that the church is going to be ready to be victorious in the battles of the end time. We're going to be ready to take 
over the kingdoms of this world and we protect this planet that God created in the first place. So we leave that voice down as we go to trumpet. that God's voice is going to be heard. We're not making it so, we're just saying the same things that are always written here. It's going to be the least of prophetic revelation. In Joshua 6, to Revelation 11, you hear the voice of God. You're feeling the mystery that the end is the plan of God. We have one. He comes back. The devil answers as the beast is kicked out of here. To get a rest. He takes over the kingdoms of the world. That's what we want to be able to release. So all of you, when you are blowing that trumpet, that's what you're blowing out there. And when we're all shouting, that's what we're shouting. You got it? Everybody ready? Hallelujah. We'll count the steps and then we'll move on. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you and release this revelation, this final revelation of the kingdom of God. God, this is what I'm asking you right now, is to release the final revelation of the kingdom of God according to Revelation chapter 10, verse 7, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, and Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. Father, release the final mystery of the kingdom of God through this shout of victory, through this trumpet blast, through your people all around the earth, in the name of Yeshua, seven, six, five, 